Hi everybody, in this video, this is part four of a video series for lesson 3.1. Um, today, this is the second day of this lesson in my class. We're going to go through JK flip-flops. And so I've got two videos for today. The first one is going to be an introduction to JK flip-flops. This this one here, part four. And then part five of the video series is going to be on divide by two counters. Okay, so let's talk about JK flip-flops. In essence, what we have is this. We have a flip-flop. It's going to work pretty much the same as a D flip-flop. But what the difference is going to be is this. A D flip-flop only had one input on the left outside of the external clock, okay? So a flip-flop is still driven by an external clock, just like we have with the D flip-flop. In this case, we see it's a positive edge triggered flip-flop. We still have Q and Q naught on the right-hand side, but as opposed to having just one input, D, Okay, so in the last one, if D was on, Q was going to be on. If D was off, Q was going to be off. We're pretty limited in what we can do here, okay? The JK flip-flop has two inputs on the left-hand side that determine its behavior, the J input and the K input, okay? And that means that we have four different ways that we can combine J and K. They can both be off, they can one or the other be on, or they can both be on. And so we have four ways that we can tell this flip-flop to behave as opposed to just really just one. It's either on or off. It's going to pass the signal through, okay? So again, this is still edge triggered. We still have Q and we still have Q naught. Now, you're going to want to pause and you're going to want to write down this information in your engineering notebook to refer to later, okay? Okay, now that you've unpaused the video, you're ready to go on. Let's talk about J and K and how they affect Q. So what happens is this, if J and K both happen to be off, in other words, if I have J and K and zero running into both of those with switches, then no matter what Q was, it's going to remain the same. We call that the no change state. So if Q was off beforehand, it's just gonna be off. If Q was on beforehand, it's gonna remain on. It's not going to change. That's not saying it's off or on, that means it doesn't change. Now, if J and K differ, okay, if J is off, Q is off. If J is on, Q is on. So if you ever have J and K and they have different signals, then basically you can refer to J and J will just trump it and it'll act like a D flip-flop, okay? If you want to get a J, K to act like a D, you'll have differing signals. J will determine what happens. We call these the clear and set phases. Clear because Z Q is zero, set because Q is one. Then the one that we'll use most often, in fact, 99% of the time in this particular class, the way that we're going to, to move forward is we're just gonna tie J and K high. Because if J and K are high, then no matter what Q was, it will do the opposite next time. So if Q was off, Q will turn on. And if Q is on, Q will turn off. It will always toggle from the previous state. As a little example of this, I have one built to show off, okay? So I'm gonna run this circuit. You'll notice there's all kinds of switches here. There's not an easier way to do this, but I have a 74LS76N JK flip-flop. This particular flip-flop, if I zoom in on it, has the following qualities. Number one, it is a negative edge triggered. So all that means is whenever the clock goes from one, that's five volts, down to zero is when it will take action. At that point in time, it will read the J and K inputs to determine what it should do and whether this should be lit up. Q naught will always be the opposite. I also have switches in here for clear and preset just to determine or show you, demonstrate that um, they act the same as they do in the previous video on J and K flip-flops. In fact, you know what, we can just start with that. Um, let's just activate the preset. Preset right now is set to five volts. It is an active low preset as determined by this bubble. So if I ever send the zero instead, it will activate preset. So look what happens. Automatically flip to a one. Don't care about the clock. It's not running at all. It's an asynchronous input. Likewise, so I deactivated this. Let's go down and activate clear. Aha, sets this to zero, regardless of the fact that the clock isn't actually running. So those work the same. I'm not gonna touch those for the rest of this demonstration, okay? Let's assume we're not using preset and clear right now to, to override the clock, okay? What's happening is this. If J is low, 
and k is low, and my clock starts going, then what I want you to notice is that nothing happens. Okay, I have no change at all in what q was. Now, if I go here and I activate the preset, now 1 is on, right? Q is on. Same thing, J and K are both low. No matter what happens here, they don't change. Now, what happens if I take J and put it high? If J is high and K is low, now they're different. If I have different inputs, then J will be the determining factor because J is high. When this clock strikes, Q will be high no matter what. And because Q is already high, you didn't even notice a change. Now, how about this? J is low, K is high. No matter what now, J is going to be the overriding factor, which means that we're going to send a zero through. This is going to turn off next time it clocks. Because it's a falling edge trigger, that's the rising edge turning it to one. There's the falling edge turning to zero. We see the zero pass through. But like I said, most of what we do in this class will be used with J and K both turned to high. And the weird thing about this is watch what happens when I start clocking. Positive edge, negative edge. Positive edge, negative edge. Positive edge, negative edge. Every time the negative edge hits, it toggles. So we have a way for the signal to flip-flop. And that's where they get their name. We are going to treat this as a flip-flopping signal, an alternating signal, for all of the circuits that we build in the coming months. So hopefully that makes sense. A couple of other things to point out before I quit this video. Okay, Timing videos work exactly the same. You look at the positive or negative edge of the trigger, determining, I mean, it depends on which trigger type you have, positive or negative, you draw dotted lines upward. At each of those situations, then, you look at J and K, and you say, well, J is 1 and k is 0. When they're different, j determines it's going to be a 1 here. You look here, j and k are both high. That's the toggle state. Because it was a 1, now it drops down to a 0. And you're just going to go through all the way through this process at each of the dotted lines and determine what the timing diagram looks like. Do note that we have positive and negative edge triggered JK flip-flops. In fact, I showed you positive and uh, positive on the previous slide in that timing diagram, but the one that was in multi-sim was a negative edge triggered. You're going to know because of the bubble that's next to the clock. The only difference between the two is we draw our dotted lines on the upside for positive edge triggered, and we would draw them in, dot in the downside for the negative edge triggered. And that's the only difference between how they behave. Okay? The one that we'll use in multi-sim, again, is the middle example here. It's called the 74LS76. It's dual because there's two of them on a single chip. It's negative edge triggered. We can tell by the little ball right here. It's a JK flip-flop. We know it's JK because there's a J and a K input. It's got asynchronous, preset, and clear inputs. And it has complementary Q and Q0 outputs. That's the one that we'll use in our class. So well, here's the, di the diagram. Again, you can go Google this to find out how to wire it if you ever need to put it on a breadboard. Hopefully that makes sense. I have one more video for you. It's on those specifically on what's called the divide by two circuit, which is a really, really common application that we're going to use over and over and over and over again. Hopefully this made sense. If not, feel free to email me with any questions.